I've come with a brief word to help you all become better communicators in whatever relationship you're in, whether you're married, dating, single, somewhere in between, hoping and scoping. Come on, church is a good place to meet somebody today. We've all got needs and desires and pain points. Some of us feel frustrated and misunderstood, stifled, even silenced a little. And I just believe God wants to come and speak very clearly to you today to really help you get past that wall that you keep hitting, right? Get past what you keep getting stuck in. Now, when we talk about practical ways to make relationships better, it's really easy to shift the blame and think, oh, if my husband was just here right now. Oh, if she would just listen. All you husbands and wives, you gotta keep your elbows locked in place today. No, none of this, none of this. Listen, pay attention to hitting your kids on the back of the head because you, what do they say? With every finger that you point, you've got three pointing right back at you, right? And so it's very important. If you wanna have healthy relationships in your life, you must master the concept of owning your life, taking responsibility for your part in the relationship. Some of us wear ourselves out by trying to control the other person, putting all the blame on the other person instead of taking responsibility for our part, for our words, for our actions, for our patterns of communication, the way we think, the way we were raised. We don't actually take stock in us. And I'm just telling you right now, if you wanna conserve energy, you will learn to get really good at only controlling yourself, learning to step out of the box ring when the other person comes at you and learning you don't have to spar every time you're given the opportunity. Come on, I came to do work today. Now, the thing to know me right off the bat is I am a top-level master expert in the art of escalation. I am not a therapist, I am not a marriage expert. I'm simply coming at you with 20 years of being married, 20 years of being a pastor, working in local church ministry, coming at you as a business owner with 25 employees, the parent of four children for 16 years. Uh, I have been the eldest sibling of five for 40 years in a divorced and reblended and reblended again family. I have done some communicating, all right? And I've learned I'm not a master at it at all. In fact, where the Bible says to be slow to get, uh, slow to speak, quick to hear, slow to get angry, yeah, I'm working on that. I, I, I speak fast, I listen slow, and I get angry real fast. And you come here, I'll go here. Oh, you gonna go here? Uh, you may walk at me, but you gonna walk back with a limp. Can I have a good amen? I ain't afraid of conflict. Some of you people, I don't like conflict. What are you talking about? I don't even know that language, all right? So I am a master in learning. Come on, are there any New Englanders in the room that are recovering in what I like to call CWA, Cuss Words Anonymous? (laughs) Come on, don't act like you so holy. The Lord will strike you from on high today, you in church. I mean, I I don't know. Sometimes you would think you're a pastor. I get in the room with my husband and I have lost it. And I'm telling you words from the pit of hell come out spewing on everybody. And I'm like, dear Jesus, I need to be saved. I'm like in my bedroom, like Lord Jesus, I thought I went to the altar, I got baptized. My mouth though, it just refused to go under. I don't know what's the problem here. Come on. Am I in good company this morning? So are we talking the same language, all right? I'm not talking at you, I'm talking with you. Now, I brought my favorite plant in the house this morning. These are my beloved knockout roses. You probably have seen this specimen. In fact, these are double knockouts. These are my favorite because they bloom twice a year and they are hard to knock out. That's why they have the name, knockout roses. You probably see them in like parking, mall, park, parking lots, shopping malls, because they're really hardy. They can deal with all of the elements, snow, sun, rain. You can plant them anywhere in the US and they'll double bloom. They can deal with the salt 
salt from the roads. You could step on them, kick them, they'll come back. And it's so convenient for me because I have zero green thumb. I kill everything I look at and I still love beautiful things. So I always plant every house we move into, I plant double knockout roses. The thing about these is knockout roses are awesome because they have lots of life, they require little maintenance, and they have a lot of beauty. It's the kind of plants I like. Lots of life, little maintenance, and lots of beauty. Can I tell you, Jesus designed from beginning of earth for you to have relationships that are like knockout roses, that they have lots of life, little maintenance, and lots of beauty. That's his intent for every relationship you're in, with your in-law, <clears throat> outlaw, with your kids, with your pets, with your coworkers, with your spouse, with your sister. God intended for them to have lots of life, require little maintenance, and have lots of beauty. And if that's the case, I wanna ask you, why do our relationships not look like that? Why are they the opposite? They're decaying and dreadful and deathly. They require every ounce of energy you got and then some. They suck the life right out you. And they're the ugliest things about your life. What's up with that? I mean, if it weren't for people, life would be amazing. <laughs> if I could live on my own island, it would be amazing. I mean, I would have no problems because everybody else is the problem, not me. <laughs> I believe God wants to speak to this today. I believe he wants to give us some really clear instructions. You know, for plants to be healthy, there has to be good soil. There's gotta be a little bit of light not all daylight, but just a little bit of light. And they should be cared for and protected. And our relationships really are that simple. They've gotta be in the right soil, good soil. They've gotta be under the light. Jesus called himself the light. And they've gotta be cared for and protected. And nothing destroys a relationship faster than poor and destructive communication. You can have your relationships in good soil, you can have them in good light, just like I could put these knockout roses in good soil, good light, but the minute that I get angry and frustrated and I just start weed whacking because I don't feel good today, because I'm ticked off today, because someone made me mad at work, so I come home and walk through the house with eggshells and I wield my words like a sword, I don't care the soil, I don't care how much you love Jesus, your relationships will suffer. That's good. That's good. So good. And so today, I believe God wants to talk to you. This is what God means when he inspired the writer of Proverbs to say in Proverbs 18, 21, that the tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap its consequences. Now, our communication skills, yeah, uh-oh, is right. Our communication skills have the power to either kill our relationships or bring them life. Now, this word death, the power of the tongue brings death or life. This word death is the Hebrew word maveth. And it's not just like death, a slow death, like I went to sleep and I didn't wake up kind of death. This means it's a picture of death by violence. Like you aggressively attacked something until it was dead. It gone. This is the kind of death our words are like. This is what Proverbs 12, 18 means when it says reckless words are like the thrusts of a sword. Cutting remarks meant to stab and to hurt. I know that I've used my words with this intention before. I learned from a very young age how to wield my words as weapons. I will tear you down faster than you can say the word light. These are choices that I make 
that unfortunately willed their consequences well into the future. Because how many of you know that just like toothpaste out of a tube, our words cannot go back in once they're said? And just like a flower, when I come in and cut it off, no matter if I meant it or not, whether it was an accident or not, whether I was not in control or not, whether the other person said what they said and caused me to say it or not, it doesn't matter how hard I try, I cannot put this back on. I could tape it, I could glue it, but it's not connected to the source anymore. So this, it will die. And this is what I believe many of our relationships are suffering from. Healthy on communication, on the other hand, the kind of communication that can bring life to a relationship is characterized by open and honest communication where all people are listening actively, they express themselves clearly and respectfully, and are willing to compromise to find solutions that work for everyone involved. Back to our verse, Proverbs 18, 21, the tongue can bring death or life. So while the word death means death by violence, the Hebrew word here for life is actually the word hi. If you're from Texas, it's ha. Hi. And it paints the picture of being living, alive, green, flowing, fresh, lively, active, reviving. It paints the picture in the noun form of a thing that is living in revival. Come on, how many of you believe your relationships need to say hi a little bit more and be full of revival? Our churches could use revival. Our world could use revival. Your workplace could use revival. Your family could could use revival, and it all starts with our communication, with how we speak. So here's the good news, and my hope for those of you today who realize that you have maimed and cut and stabbed your relationships to death with your poor communication skills. Jesus can grace you. He wants to teach you to change your behavior so that your words can be fresh and flow with life and bring revival back to those dead relationships. Can I tell you, no relationship is too dead. It's dead, but it ain't too dead. I just figured long time ago that God brings things back to life. And so there's some relationships in my life that are dead. I had to let them die. Because there was nothing else in my strength and my power that I could do to raise that dead thing back to life. But that does not mean for a second that I have lost faith in the God who does miracles. In the God who brings things back to life. I don't go to the coffin every day and say, hello, are you awake yet? No, 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 I just wait for the resurrection power that shakes the earth, and when it's time, that dead person will come out of its tomb. Some of you need to hear that today. It's the same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead. It lives in you and it lives in me. Those of you who just got baptized today, the spirit of God lives in you today, and that same spirit that brought dead Jesus back to life, it lives in you now. And you need to understand that that resurrection life, it can permeate like healing balm to all of your relationships. Amen? Amen. Now, what I want to do for the time that we have today is I want to look at destructive and healthy forms of communication styles because we need to be aware. Sometimes we're not even aware of the words that we're speaking. We're not even understanding these forms of communication. So let's look at our destructive communication and how it happens. And some of you are going to be like, oh, I didn't know that was a big deal. I didn't know what I was doing was unhealthy. First type of communication that is unhealthy is passive communication. Passive communication is where the people in the relationship avoid expressing their needs and desires and their wants directly. And it leaves everybody with bottled up emotions living in resentment. Where you're afraid to say what you want. You know, things like this, like, babe, are you okay? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I'm, uh, mm-hmm. what's wrong? Nothing. I'm fine. Things like, well, I guess I'll just do it myself, like always. <laughs> sure, we can do whatever you want to do. We always do what you want to do. This kind of passive communication, it avoids taking responsibility for your needs. Remember, it's not their fault, it's your fault. When you speak passively and you're not direct about you want what you want, even though you feel like you're not being hostile, even though you feel like you ain't coming at somebody, you are cutting down the relationship by avoiding responsibility for expressing clearly and directly what it is you want. And if you want to bring your relationships back to life, you must stop using vague, ineffective communication. What about aggressive communication? The kind of aggressive, the kind of communication that involves being critical, blaming, using insults to intimidate a person. This is my favorite language, apparently. You are completely wrong. How could you think that way? You always do this. You never listen to me. I cannot believe that you would say something so stupid. You idiot. Wait a minute, what this one? This is, this is my favorite. This is what I do to my husband all the time. You are just like your dad. Oh, there's your mother. I didn't know I married your mother. It's great, awesome. I am so done with this relationship. I'm up to here, I'm done. I have had it with you. You worthless piece of And I'm gonna tell you, some of you are suffering from things that your parents said to you before you were old enough to know what they meant. (laughs) And you are living in your trauma. That's real. That's real. And all of a sudden you have kids and you get into frustration and pain and fear and you start replicating the cycle because you just thought it was normal to see dishes fly across the room. You thought it was normal to cuss somebody out and walk out the room. We have to learn to change our aggressive communication. What about manipulative communication? Anybody speak the tongue of manipulation? Oh, I do, pastor, that's me. Thank you for all the honest people in the house. This is the kind of language where we try to control or influence another person, their thoughts or behaviors by using guilt. Anybody got a mother-in-law in in the room? (laughs) Guilt and obligation. Oh, it sure is nice to hear from you finally. You should call your mother more often. I'll hurt myself if you leave me. You're just like everybody else. You always leave. You always abandon me. If you loved me, you would do this for me. This kind of manipulative communication, it makes it difficult to be in relationship with you because nobody feels safe. You may never explode. You may have your little ways to cut and jab. Oh, that's how we raise children today, okay. I raised you better than that. Nobody feels safe in your presence. We have to change our manipulation. 
What about defensive communication? This occurs when a person becomes defensive and reacts negatively to constructive criticism. You might be a boss and you have an employee that you have to speak to that you're in relationship with, but they're so defensive you can't help them. Or maybe you're that employee. And somebody tries to tell you, girl, that don't look flattering on you. And you say, well, just close your eyes when you look at me. We get defensive because we're so afraid of rejection. Someone says that you hurt their feelings and you say, well, I didn't mean it that way. You took it out of context. We shift the blame to the other person. We don't take responsibility. Okay, I'm sorry, but you know, you're not exactly perfect yourself either. What about dismissive communication? The kind of communication that minimizes the person's worth, validity, value, where we just dismiss their feelings altogether. You know, God, it's not a big deal. Why are you taking such a big deal about this? Stop making such a fuss. Look, I do not have time for this. I don't have time for this. Look, say what you want. I'm not arguing with you another second. Do what you want. You always do it anyways. I'm telling you right now, these destructive patterns of communication, can I tell you why we speak them? We speak them because we're born knowing them. They're our mother tongue. We come into the world speaking the language of sin. We are born with a sin nature. We are born not knowing right from wrong. And then our parents model for us more patterns of health of dysfunction. This is why it's so important that you and I learn how to say one very important statement in life. It's made of five words. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. If you want to have life in your relationships, you've got to learn to use honesty. Speak directly. I'm really struggling with our relationship right now. Can we please talk about it? It really hurts me when you didn't come home for Christmas. I need to understand your schedule next year so that I can have proper expectations. You need to learn to use respect. Respect says, look, I, I know we don't see this eye to eye. You don't have to see it the way I see it but help me understand your point of view. That's called empathy. You wanna have life-giving relationships, you've gotta have empathy. You've gotta to learn to take yourself out of your pain and your trauma and put yourselves in the shoes of the other person. Feel their hurt, feel their pain, feel their trauma. This is when relationships, you can't grow them overnight. There's nothing you can do about the dead and the decay. But if you will start working in very healthy communication where you learn a new language, the language of heaven, is this not what Jesus did for us? He left his place in heaven for earth. He left eternity for time. He stepped into our pain and into our trauma. He didn't escalate the situation. We were in a bad situation, you and I. We were separated from our creator in heaven because of this sin nature that we hold, because everything we touch gets destroyed. And so God in his goodness said, I'm gonna communicate with them. I'm gonna get down on their level. I'm gonna walk the earth with them. I'm gonna walk in their suffering. I'm going to walk in their pain so that we can find a compromise, so that we can find a solution to this thing called sin. And he laid down his right to be right. Some of you are holding on to your right to be right. Some of you use your weapons as a sword, thrusting and cutting and killing and maiming, saying, stay back, this is my right to be right. And I'm telling you, if you wanna have a healing in your marriage, a healing with your kids, a healing with your in-laws, a healing with your daughter-in-law, a healing with your friend, your best friend from so long ago, I'm telling you, you gotta put down the sword. You gotta put down the scissors. And over time, just like knockout roses, you'll find 
that your relationship has a lot of life, requires little maintenance, and displays a lot of beauty. That's the hope for you. That's the grace that will come on us if you do one thing, and I'm gonna close with this. If you use your mouth in the most life-giving way to your creator, I'm sorry, please forgive me. I've messed it up, I can't fix it, but you can. And so Jesus, I give you that dead relationship and I ask that you bring it back to life. Why don't you close your eyes and bow your heads. I wanna ask Jesus, the master gardener, to come into your heart today. Some of you have some messed up relationships. I know, because so do I. How many of you just say, I need, I need to learn a new language? Would you just raise your hand and say, I need to learn new, new ways? Thank you for your honesty. Dozens of hands. Can I, can I tell, keep your hands raised? Can I just talk to you? Have your hands raised? You, you have to go to therapy. You gotta read books. You gotta get like Rosetta Stone for healthy communication. It won't come natural. These are tools we must learn. But Jesus will walk with you and he will teach you and he will stop you in the middle of doing the cuss out thing to your kids. He'll stop you, he'll convict you. You just respond and let the master teacher teach you a new language. And I'm gonna pray for you in a minute. But before we close, I wanna ask all of you because this all starts with you. If you don't adopt the heaven language, if you don't adopt the Son of God, you'll never be able to speak the, the healthy language. It'll, it'll always sound right, but it won't be connected to the source. It won't be in good soil. It won't be under the light. And so you'll still have issues. And so with every eye closed, with every head bowed, nobody moving, this is the most important business you'll do all week. I wanna ask some of you, if you've never bowed your knee to King Jesus, if you've never used your words for the most important life altering moment, and that's to confess that he's the son of God, that you're a sinner, in fact, in need of a savior. Would you raise your hand? Come on, one, two, three. I wanna see who I'm praying for today. Come on, I'm looking. Thank you, ma'am, I see your hand. Thank you, ma'am, I see your hand. I'm looking around. Come on, this is the most important thing. Sir, in the back, I see your hand. Come on, heaven sees you. Thank you, sir, I see your hand. Thank you, ma'am. Come on, this is amazing. Let's all stand up. We're gonna pray this prayer together. Come on, everybody, Christians, everybody, say, Dear Jesus, say, come into my heart. Make me a new person. Teach me a new language. Say, I bow my tongue before you. Convict me where I don't speak your words. I wanna give those to you. Come on, give that dead relationship to Jesus right now in your heart. Ask him to raise it to new life. Father, I pray for every person here, every heart surrendered, every mouth surrendered. Father, we need your help and we need your goodness. We need your love. We need your peace to come in us. Come on, Christians, we need you, Jesus. Come on, cry out to Jesus right now. We need you, Holy Spirit, to take over, to do what you do, to raise dead things back to life. Come on, I come against the spirit of mutism, the spirit of lame, the spirit of blindness, God, where we can't see what we're doing is wrong. And I pray, Jesus, that you would open our hearts, open our minds. We love you. Come on, lift your hands. Let's sing this to the Lord. Let's let the Holy Spirit seal the deal our heart. And may we never be the same in Jesus' name.